Hey guys, Chris here, aka Brickin' It, and welcome back to another LEGO City video. Yes, it has been absolutely ages since I've done a LEGO City video, mainly just due to the fact that LEGO keep releasing all these D2C sets, and I want to buy them, build them, and live stream them with you guys, so the city has taken a little bit of a backseat, but we're coming up to LEGO City month with January, we're going to be getting the new LEGO modular building, we're going to get the new LEGO Ninjago garden set, and I just wanted to get back into this and get some more sets. The new city sets look absolutely fantastic, but I saw something that was puzzling a lot of LEGO City Builders, and that is the new road plate system. How is it gonna work? It doesn't seem to work with old modular buildings. It's absolutely really, really weird. And I'm gonna tell you that I am gonna be adopting it and why I'm gonna be adopting it. So really it's two reasons. One, here is a quick kind of mock-up of what I've done for this is the size of a new LEGO road plate. In fact, it's actually two of the LEGO road plates because the LEGO road plates look according to the pictures, to be 16 by 16 solid piece, which then you connect on and clip together. So this is a 16 by 32 base plate, or a half base plate, as you will. And yeah, I, as you can already see, this is way, way smaller than the current ones we have, which are actually double the size, 32 by 32. Now, that's mainly because the has the road and then it has the two pavements on the side. And that's really, really cool. I love them. I think they look absolutely great, especially when you do all the tiling on the pavements. I think they look... But... The issue is that they take up a lot of room. And when you've got modulars, they already have pavements, such as the bookshop here. In fact, this is the other side of the bookshop. But as you can see, they already have a pavement, so you don't really need to add another one onto it. And then a lot of people say, well, you just move the modulars one bit forward to add to that. Another issue with that is though, then the modular is no longer modular. You can't move it around, it has to stay with that street. And it makes it really, really awkward when you're trying to change up your city, move things around, push it around for new sets that come out and stuff. So. Yeah, with this, it'd be a lot easier because basically you can just clip it in and it's done just like the current ones, but in a smaller scale. Another awesome thing is the fact that we always have these issues of the fact that the road plates are in two packs. You have the straights with the T-junction and then you have the corner ones. And it's just really annoying that that's the only different styles we have. Everyone knows that roads are not like that at all. There are lots of different variations you want and maybe have a crosswalk somewhere or bumpers or something like that. Now with the new one, it has little bits where you can pull them out and make them whatever you want. And I think that is so, so cool. It makes them more like what the LEGO City users call the Mills Plate Structure, where you can literally brick build your roads and it just looks absolutely awesome. So this is kind of a halfway step to that, a little bit cheaper. So the issues that people have with these road plates is the fact that they are too plates thick. Now, obviously, modular buildings are on a base plate, as we've said. So they are actually like a half plate and then you have one plate for the actual tiling that goes on it. So because these are two plates thick high and this is only one plate and a base plate, they just will not align because they're not in the same system so they won't clip together. However, if you make it like I have, which is actually one of the new road base plates but on a base plate itself, a 32 by 16, it now puts them at least on the same system but one plate higher. So as you can see here, it's now one plate higher but you can clip this in if you wanted to. Now. Lego itself with the new road system seems to be doing that. If you look on the sides here, it actually has them sunk in weirdly. I don't want to do that with my city, so I want to solve that anyway. So this is where I thought I've been pulling apart my bookshop as you can see over here to try and get this to work with the current systems. And I think I've cracked it. And hopefully you guys can follow along and let me know if there's any issues with this or whether we can do anything to make it even better. So let's take this road plate to one side and let's get my base plate in which the modular building is going to be sat on. So I'm only doing a half base plate for this one because I've been trying to figure it all out. So you can literally replicate this onto the big ones like the downtown diner and stuff. But I've literally just been doing it with the bookshop section. As you can see, it's a mess right over here to get this working absolutely perfectly with these road plates. So first things first, what you're gonna need is you're gonna need everything here. Obviously this base plate will already come with the modular buildings. So I'm gonna worry about the base plate itself, but you do need to get a new base plate 16 by 32 for your road plates themselves because they need to have that slight bit of thickness higher so they are now consistent with the system, the LEGO system as it is. So other than that, you also kind of need to have a collection of bricks like this. Now, you can see them here. This is the kind of smallest way I've seen it. There are probably a lot of better ways to do this, but basically what I'm doing here is doing what's called a mini mills, I'm gonna call it system, which if you know what a mill system is, it's where they literally put bricks around 
uh, and then a plate on top which gives them that thickness so then the row plates are also modular but it also gives the benefit of adding custom lighting because you have these now tracks underneath so you can light up the city really nicely and hide all the lighting which you can also probably do with the road plates now because there's little bits that you can pull out so you could easily trace wire through, connect them up to cars and stuff and make it look really, really awesome. So first thing you can see what I've done here on the plate to get it ready, which is we've got these two by four plates right here and we have the two by two in the corner. Now this is gonna be the garden area at the back and then this bit here is gonna be the connector that connects to the pavement. So here I've just done it as uh, two by sixes, two by sixes, and a two by four in the middle, but you can do whatever you want, just whatever plates you have available. The rest of it is more the issue. Now, this is gonna be the back of the garden, and as you can see on a modular building, the back is green on this one. So depending on which modular you're doing this to, you probably need to get the plates that match that. So I don't have any green ones on me at the moment, so for instruction purposes here, I'm just gonna be using dark bluish gray to make them different. So if you clip those onto the back, onto those plate system there, so with adding those there is now two plates high, which is the same as the road. That is perfect because obviously you're gonna be adding one tile on, which then gives it the one height difference. So other than that, you can then use the other ones. So these are the eight by eight plates here, and these just make it a lot easier. Like I said, you can make it smaller, but these are the, the largest, I would say, because they're still quite sturdy without having, you know, with the gaps underneath, because you, I'm trying to do this with as few plates as possible. So you can do that for all of those. So that's four of those additionally on as well. And then this bit here is the bit that gets a little bit complicated. I've been trying to rack my brains around. So this is how it's gonna connect here. Now these are the magic source for how these are gonna connect. And these are the two by two tiles, but they've got like a two studs on one side. And what that's gonna do is you clip those on to the plate like so. So if it was on the road plate, you put it on the road plate. And that there is the connector. So you can see that the road has stayed flat, but the connector is now studded, so you can then add it to the actual modular building. So once we have that in, you can kind of see what you've got to play with here. Now this bit's just to kind of get it a little bit sturdier and easier to connect together so you can take it apart and make it modular if you want to. Now, this is where I've tried to do it with as few bricks as possible, but if you did want to have custom lighting and stuff, you may have to make a channel out of it. So, you know, adding a, a two by three instead of a two by four or something there. But I wanted to do this systematically and easy so people can follow along and then they can change it up however they want to. So basically you have to make this a little bit stronger here because of this connector here, because if we had one of these plates right here, like I was using for the rest of it, it isn't gonna fit and you're gonna need to have this gap here, which is really, really irritating. So let's put that back and let's see how we can build up this structure here. This would be on the sides there is what I'm thinking. And then we'd have one in the middle. So what I've used is the eight by four plates here to just put a ridge along so that it's proper solid underneath the structure right here, just to make it easier for this connector. And also I'm gonna fill in these gaps here with the two by fours, if you can see right there. So just showing you quickly to the camera, that is how it would look with just that one little bit of a gap there, which you can fill in if you want to, but I've just found it's not really worth it. And then we can put these ones on the sides, which are the eight by twos, connecting that really nice and tightly there and then you can just fill in the middle with the four by fours again and four by four here and here and then two by threes right here to create that gap like i said you can do this however you want with whatever plates you want this is just to make it nice and simple so that is pretty much it and there we go that is your now plate that your modular building or half building in this case is going to go on to so you can see here with the road plate that they have those two connectors that will then easily clip in to the structure right there and you have that modularity which is just really really cool so i'm now going to actually put the bookshop onto here so you can see what it will look like and how you will then have that pavement which everyone wants to have for this system Okay, and there we go. That is now the bookshop onto this new system. So if you can just see really, really quickly, you'll see that this one is slightly higher by two plates. And that is literally perfect now. It will go with those row plates. So if I quickly grab the row plate again, and as I say, this one does have those two connectors that I've added on. You can then just really easily clip this on and that's it. Now, there's this bit here, which looks a bit dodgy, and that's because that's where the tree for Birch Books goes, because the Birch Bookshop is a little bit different. So 
You can put the tree in there because there's also a one stud that needs to go here for the tree. And that is it. And now all you do is, is you put back on the tiles, the one by four tiles that go at the front of the structure. And that is how you then incorporate the new road system with the old modular plates. And it's pretty sturdy. You can pick it up as well, which is quite nice. But also, if you wanted to remove this, like I said, to make it modular, all you have to do is take off the front tiles here. And obviously with, like I said, birch box, it's a little bit more odd because the tree, but that is pretty much it. You can then just pull and pop this out and that's it. It's that simple. And the thing is, is that with these, these will be a lot stronger as well, the real ones, because they'll be a solid piece. Whereas at the moment, obviously it's a big tile piece that I've used to kind of work out the maths for how it all fits. Okay, so that's it. I think that is problem solved with these new road plates. So now all we have is the benefits, whereas like saying that you can add custom lighting, having less room to waste on roads. I think that's a really, really cool opportunity. And I can't wait to see what people do with these new road plates by adding and removing certain things and making really awesome custom road layouts, which I think that's what the true benefits of these new road plates have. Let me know in the comments down below if you're going to be changing these road plates, whether you had the same concerns as me. I really hope this has helped you kind of problem solve that. Obviously, this has only been on for a half much of the building, so you just literally repeat the same for the bigger ones, and you can probably get around with using less plates again because you've got obviously more structure to work with. But this is super exciting for me. I think this is also going to start me on the transition to slowly adding lighting kits for these sets as well because I do think adding lighting to your cities really does help out. And it was a lot harder doing that on just a generic base plate. It was obviously that's why the mill system is so effective, but it does cost a lot of money. Whereas I do think this is a little bit cheaper. I think plates are slightly cheaper than bricks. And you know what? I'm going to have to just transition to it anyway with these new road systems that definitely give me another pro as well as the lighting structure. But anyways, I really do hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a like. It definitely helps out. And if you loved it, how about subscribe? I'm definitely going to be going back to doing more Lego City stuff in the new year with gardens, as well as I've got Ninjago City and Docks to do. And I just recently bought the Ghostbusters Firehouse as well, which I want to be adding in somehow to the city. That thing is massive. But anyways, thanks for watching and have an absolute awesome day. If you enjoyed the vid, then if you haven't already, please like and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. And as always, keep bricking it.